I'm Ali from New Scotland Knots, and this is a knitting podcast on all things fiber art. Um, welcome if this is your first time. Feel free to grab a tea or hot cocoa. I already had mine earlier this morning, so I'm just sipping on water. I don't know how long it's going to be, but we'll get right to it. So, it's been, I think, three weeks since my lab pod podcast. Um, Apparently, I don't know how to count. My plan was to do it two weeks, and then I just counted completely wrong. I started the week after it was released rather than the week it was. So sorry we're a week late, but given that, I do have a little bit more to show you since I've been pretty busy um, knitting and crocheting away. First, we'll start with works in progress or whips. I have... so I have three works in progress. One is the Christmas socks for Evan from 2020. I haven't worked on those. Once I want, I want to do more sock knitting, so once I get in that headspace, I'm sure I'll just finish them off because I have a, the last third of um, the, the second sock left and then it's done. So that won't take any time at all once I actually sit down and do it. So no progress to show on that. Next up is the Velvety Cardigan, and I've done a lot. It's, um, it hasn't been the most fun, so I'm a little bit discouraged amongst other things, but I'll show you so you can see what I mean. So last time I showed you, I think it was just a long rectangle for going back and forth on the body before you divided for the front and back panel. And now we have the front and back panels as well as a sleeve with funny decreases but that's my fault not the design's fault. Um, so yeah lots and lots of progress, tons of knitting, and honestly not the most fun knitting. I started it um, and had the feeling right off the bat when I started the project, mm, I don't think I'm going to enjoy this. But instead of starting over, I said, you know what, I love it, I thought about this, um, which I did. I chose the, this pattern because I thought it would be good for um, an everyday basic sweater. It's grey, the grey is one of my favourite colours. Um, all of my favorite cardigans have always been gray, um, store-bought, um, that is. And the fuzziness, I thought it would be cozy, add maybe some wooden buttons at the end, and we'd be good to go. So that was the plan. <laughs> and even though with the thought and all the choices that went into it, I don't think it's gonna work out. Um, so it was off to a bad start because I was upset with the ribbing. So you can barely see it because we so we have twisted rib on the back and front, which is a lot of work, and I found it was a lot of work for not the best payoff, which I have talked about before. And then we have broken rib. So that's if I'm right that is about the technique. You knit one side and along the way back you did and pearl. And then you knit and then you knit and pearl. So it kind of looks like a rib and it kind of looks like a waffle stitch kind of mixed in together. Hard to see because of the um, the fluffiness of the sweater, but that's okay. So next up, we have the rib and the broken rib, and that's difficult to knit with a regular yarn. Now with this yarn, it's very hairy, as you can see. It's a bit thicker. It's not a mohair silk blend. This is actually an alpaca blend. Um, I think I'll pack out a little bit of wool and the rest is uh, polyamide, I'm pretty sure. So similar to mohair, it's not the most fun to knit with. It leaves a great result, but if you make a mistake, you really can't go back and fix it. Like to rip it out, you it would just be knots. Um, even if you try to, I know people try to freeze it in the freezer beforehand and then try ripping it, I think that works better with mohair. But since the fibers are just so long, um, and thick on this, as you can see, there you go. Um, it just wouldn't work. So if a mistake was made, the mistake stayed, <laughs> basically. 
And for that same reason, I can't rip out and use the yarn for something else or try it again, which is discouraging because knitting it, I already realized there's a lot of things I want to fix, which is number one, the size. Now, I'm blaming this on me because I had a different gauge. I couldn't match gauge. Um, I don't know how she got a gauge that tight on big needles. But I did the math and I did it all correctly and it's in my Ravelry page if you do want to check out the project to, um, to look at the math. So feel free to correct me if I, if I was incorrect. And with my gauge, I was supposed to knit a size one. Now normally I'd knit her largest size and that's basically what I did. So instead of a size one, I said, hmm, it's gonna be tight. I know it's going to be small because her other pattern ended up being small. And that was the, it was a, it was a vest, the Cornelia vest, I think. So I actually knit a size three, which would have been the normal size I knit if I did be gauge um, for like a 42, um, 46 inch bust. So I thought, okay, I'm giving myself two sizes of wiggle room. Yes, I'm using a different yarn combination. Instead of buying three times the amount of mohair, I bought one thick strand of, um, of the alpaca, alpaca blend. And I calculated so I had the same amount of yardage and I thought I'd be good, I have the size. Um, Got the extra ball just in case. And uh, it's just, it's not gonna work out. I'm I'm running out of yarn. I think the sweater's going to be too small, which is really upsetting, considering it's hard to knit because it's a dark yarn, a fuzzy yarn, with did and pearl, did and pearl. Uh, and I'm going to run out of yarn and I won't even be able, even if I was able to finish the project, and learn to like it. Now the fact that I can't even, I'm just kind of done. Like I'm so done. I, um, I'll finish up the rest of the yarn I have, but it's just, it's just not gonna, it's just not a happy, a happy project. It's made me really upset and angry, which is something I don't want for my knitting. I want to be happy and it's a stress reducer and not, <laughs> not supposed to create stress, uh, but I'll go into a bit more. So, I ended up picking about 120 stitches rather than the 80 that was suggested just because again my gauge was different so you know that makes sense. Slowly started to de decrease so I wouldn't have these massive bat wings but as you can see they still are quite large mm -hmm. and I'm just about to start the cuff. Now I have the cuff plus a whole arm to do. Here's all the yarn I have left. It's not gonna make it. This arm took probably a ball and three, two, a ball and two thirds. And even if I was able to finish the cuff, cuff and squeeze the last sleeve and do, do some more rapid decreases, nobody would notice really. Uh, it's not going to be enough because then I have to do the ribbing all around the the front. All up one side, around, and back down. I have to do the rib, and that's about, I'd say an inch, maybe an inch and a half, we'll see. And I'll need more yarn for that. Now, normally, this wouldn't be an issue because if I bought the right amount, which I, I did, like I, I got the right yardage, and I got extra, so I don't want to say it's yarn chicken, but I'm out of yarn. And my local yarn stores aren't carrying it. <laughs> I, I sold them out of the, the last batch that I bought, and I don't think they've had a restock ever since. I'm going to give them a ring just to see if they have one coming in soon. But the fact that I just want to finish this for the sake of finishing it, and then if I love it, I love it, and if I don't, I'll figure out somebody who does. But the fact that now I can't even finish it, I'm not enjoying knit it, knitting it. Um, I don't have the yarn. Like, it, it just feels like a mess. So it's really gotten me down in the dumps, especially since this has been the one project that's been for me and everything else I'm making is for um, other people. Which I love, don't get me wrong, I do. But since the one that's for me isn't bringing me joy and it's a big proje project, it's a little bit upsetting. So we'll see what happens. 
I'm going to just keep knitting until I run out of yarn and then and then I guess I'll just stop and we'll see if I get a new a new ball. The dialect doesn't really matter to me at this point if it's going to be a little bit off in color. Uh, not that important since I just want it done because then at least I can find some use for it since I can't reuse the yarn. Um, let alone get all the time back that I spent on it since it's taken a long time. So yeah, that is the Velvety Cardigan, work in progress number two. Next up is my last work in progress and it is the Lacy Romper. And it's a romper for baby with a little bit of lace detail. So this isn't the best. Give it a break. It's not steamed, it's not washed or anything, so it's kind of curling up on itself and looks a bit strange. But this is the front panel of the romper. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a chevron lace detail, buttonholes at the bottom. And I'm nearly done the top. I'm about to start decreases and going on to the armholes. And then I'll do the back, same thing. Um, uh, the back actually might be plain. I don't think it has the lace details in the back, so it'll be a bit quicker to knit. But the pattern is really easy to memorize, which I appreciate. And it's actually kind of a two-in-one. So you get the base pattern, and then you can choose either the chevron or a little eyelet pattern. Now, the woman I'm, work I'm um, knitting this for, she wanted all of the baby knits to be unisex. So I thought, but she did want some lacy details because, you know, it's cute, it's pretty. So I thought this was a bit more unisex than the, the one with many eyelets. Uh, I'll try to post a picture up here if, if I'm able to find one and you can see the comparison of the two. But yeah, super easy. I'm knitting this with drops, baby merino wool. Um, so super wash, machine washable, it'll be easy, hard wearing, but still with the benefit of wool, which I like. So yeah, that is my last work in progress. I'll hopefully be done it soon. And then I have a few more pieces for, um, I guess a collection of baby knits that I'm making for her. Uh, yeah, and then I'll be done. I think I still have a sweater. I'd like to do one or two sets of bloomers and, oh jeez. I'm, I'm rounding it up and whoops yeah I'd like to do a sweater um, the teddy bear sweater by petite knit I think it's called a set of bloomers maybe a set of leggings and a blanket and I have all the yarn so hopefully everything <laughs> is smooth and we don't have any issues like my cardigan so yeah there's all the works in progress and I do have a few finished objects to show you since last time. And we'll start off with the baby knits, as previously stated. So here is one. It's the flax, the light flax sweater, I think, by Tin Can Knits. Um, so it's the same as the flax, just a, like a, t a tighter gauge with a thinner yarn. Again, I use the Drops Baby Merino it's for soft wool. And it's a really cute pattern since it has the, the garter stitch panel on each arm. Just add a little bit of detail. Nice and soft, brown, neutral, not too much else to say. If you haven't knit a flax sweater, I do suggest it, especially if it's your first. I made my first sweater almost exactly a year ago today, um, and it was a flax. It's a very detailed pattern, and it also comes in all sizes. They're going to be the one designer that has everything from a newborn all the way to like 4XL. So whether you need sizes at either end or want to match your gauge, since you don't match gauge, there's definitely an option for you. Or even if you want to make a sweater for the whole family and you can all match, which would be pretty cute. There's some pictures online of people who have done that and they're nice, nice to look at. Next up, I'm calling this a finished object because it's done, I finished knitting it, but I do need some details and those details are buttons. I need to sew the buttons on, but I'm waiting to get buttons until I finish that lacy romper. And this is the other romper. So 
Here are the sleeves. And then the back. The back's the exact same as the front, just one side you do. You do buttonholes and the um and the straps, and the other side you don't have the straps. Again, it's knit with Drops Baby Merino. I would say it was an easy pattern to follow, but it wasn't. I really liked the design. And it looked easy, which is why I chose it. Lots of people commented saying it was really big for the baby, so they suggested going down a size, which I did. So I did I was planning on doing the 9 to 12 month, but I did the 6 to 9 month size, I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure I also used a slightly tighter gauge, but I wasn't worried because it's garter stitch. This is like it's gonna stretch. You get a little bit more wiggle room for for growth in either direction with garter stitch. And the other big thing I noticed when looking at pictures, the baby legs, they, they had this really big bottom and it was all loose on the babies, but then it was tight around the legs. It's like they have chubby legs. You need to fit their legs in the hole. So what I ended up doing was with the front and back, I extended it probably about four more rows and I did steeper, steeper increases for the front and back so you had a little so this will just fold up with the buttons and now there's a little bit more um more wiggle room for legs because before it was really tight it would have been like that um, so i'm hoping it works um, i'd like to get some feedback from the mom to see if it actually fits and if she would suggest it again um just for future babies i might be knitting for um, and if it doesn't work, oh well, I tried. <laughs> I really didn't want to have chubby legs and a tiny hole and cut off circulation. Like that's not, that's not fun. So yeah, that's my second finished object. And those are all the baby clothes knits I have to show you. And the next is crochet. So I have tried to crochet in the past a couple times. And the most I've been able to do is a chain stitch. Nothing else, and even that I only get about half the time. I've looked, watched YouTube videos, and I've read books, and I just, I can't seem to get my mind around crochet. I haven't tried in-class learning, but that's because it's just not an option right now. Uh, the need and want to crochet never really came up until more recently. but. About two weeks ago, a UK-based department store, and they offered, it was a free course, the, it was a couple hours long, and you, you were taught how to crochet a lion from the top, the top set, and it was free. The timing worked out great with the, um, with the time difference, so that worked out, I said, you know what, I'll join. If it's just like the YouTube videos and it doesn't work out, oh well, it's not like I wasted a lot of time or money on it. But thankfully, it actually worked. And I managed to start crocheting Emma the Bunny uh, thanks to that course. So this is my first crocheted item ever. My tension was really tight like really tight, uh, which makes sense because I'm also a tight knitter. So learning something new, I'm going to be extra tight. And you can see that even with how the arms and the ears kind of twist. And that's because of my tightness going around. Mm -hmm. I did give her a little wash the other night and uh, that did help to soften up the, the tension as well as the yarn. So it worked and it, it washed and dried well. Like I was able to form her head and her tummy back in shape. So this is and the bunny. Now, although the lesson was teaching with a line pattern, and the whole thing was you needed to, you have to have a pattern in order to follow along with the lesson, but I've been getting the Toph books at the library. So I was able to, if I wanted to do the tiger or uh, the lion, I was able to, but I did the bunny. So I have the original book, not mine, but 
the library's copy, the new collection, and the dog. The dog collection. And they're the cutest things ever. I love them. <laughs> I don't remember being really into stuffies growing up like I had my teddy bear and a couple of my favorites but my big thing was probably Barbies <laughs> so I'm surprised that as an adult I love them but I think it is just the innocence of is there a page I think it's just the innocence and the similar shapes of each one where it is almost a collection and I can totally see myself owning a bunch and making a bunch of different ones one day because they're all just so cute. I also have the sheep version, so I think it was a quarterly magazine from Toph, and it's 12 or 13 sheep patterns, and as a knitter and lover of the fiber arts, I thought that would be very appropriate. So I do own that copy, but these are all from the library, and I hope to... I hope to get um, a copy for myself. But they're super cute and the best thing is not only do they have instructions um very detailed instructions for the patterns and once you learn how to read the pattern it's really easy learning to read it was a bit difficult because it's um it's like bed mass actually from like high school math <laughs> <laughs> you do the brackets and then make sure you have the commas. But once you get the hang of that, it was really easy. And they also have online resources on YouTube where you can follow through and they teach you um, they teach you each step along the way. So here's how you do the foundation ring and here's how you increase and here's how you decrease and sew up the nose and stuff it and make sure you have the right um, ratio so you get like the tummy and and everything and so the head can balance um but yeah i love them i think they're really cute this little emma took a bit longer to make and a because it was my first time and it was new b because i had really tight tension and i found it really difficult to get the crochet hook into each stitch and that being said since the stitches were really small it made everything a little bit uh, slower but just a bit more difficult especially for a beginner and a new crocheter for I think a chunkier yarn would have worked out a lot better because it was easier to get that that hook in and do your double crochet but yeah so that was try number one and I think I did like six or seven legs to practice if I chose the best four and then continued with the rest of the, the body parts and then over the last 24 hours or yeah, 24 hours I made oops just got knocked down um, I made the second Emma the bunny so this one was a lot quicker to knit and part of the reason was because it was the second time I was doing it with thicker yarn and a bigger crochet hook and I think she's just darling I have a little tail in the back there we go. I didn't add that for the first one. I just wanted to figure out how to do it. Little eyes and a nose. I played around with the nose and the eyes today. It was a bit, a bit of a learning curve. I think part of it is, since I'm still a bit new, it's a little bit messy around the face for my decrease rows. So it's just a, just where the attention is, since it is messy, I'm, I'm more self-conscious about that, that result. But it's okay. I think she's pretty cute and I will end up washing her as well. I just want to show you guys first while she was dry to try to soften up the wool because the wool is quite it's stiff but that's because crocheting for every I think it's about a th it takes about a third more yarn almost twice or even twice for every knit stitch you have your V you have two crochet stitches together to make one so it's twice as thick as what it would have been if it was knitted. So with that, it's a, I guess a harsh stitch. I don't want to offend anybody because it's also my choice of yarn. This is really soft because I use Superwash Merino wool, but specifically made for babies. For this one, I use, I forget the yarn. It's Ella, Ella Ray. 
still superwash, um, 100% virgin wool, but it's superwash. So I don't know how that works, because to my understanding, I thought virgin wool was either wool that hasn't been used before or untreated. It depends kind of where you go to find that information. So I don't know how it can be superwash if it's virgin wool. So maybe it's just first time wool going through. It's not recycled, that's what I'm trying to get at. But it is super wash, so I will give it a wash. I'm going to put it in a wool wash to try to soften it up with uh, some wash with lanolin, and I think that will help because it is it is a bit scratchy because it's stiffer. Uh, for if you feel the yarn in a ball, it's not it's not nearly as scratchy. So I hope that will help. But I also think this was a better bet with yarn because it is more hardy, so it can it can handle more wear and tear. Um, from a child. <laughs> so we'll see how it works. I did try to sew everything up really tight, even the the tail. Um, I did. I went a couple times around to sew that up, but yeah, we'll see. So hopefully I'll give it a wash. Hopefully that'll soften it up and that the baby, the baby likes it. And if not, maybe it can sit nicely on, on a shelf as a little display toy, but it is soft. There's no, there's nothing in it. There's no beads and the eyes and nose are are just wool so it is, it is child safe and it is machine washable which is good in case it gets dirty so yeah that is my second time crocheting here's my first time and they're little buddies and i can't wait to make more so that is all of my works in progress and completed projects that i've had in the past couple weeks i do think that cardigan has slowed me down a lot because I can usually knit a sweater in two to four weeks and I've been working on that since January, which is tough. It's it's hard for me. I, I have all these sweaters lined up that I want to make and I haven't been able to make them. And now that it's coming to the end of the winter, I kind of want to get into lighter clothes. So we'll see. So that being said, I do have to, I have two project ideas and I want to choose one or the other to help kind of get my not my mojo back because I've, I've been knitting and I've been crocheting and I've been enjoying those baby knits but the knits for myself since that cardigan just isn't it's not making me happy and I think I need to get a project that gets me pumped and excited and maybe excited for spring and the upcoming nice weather so I do have two projects in mind and I, I specifically chose these two because I already have the yarns so I don't want to buy more yarn so last time we talked, I mentioned that I did get a sweater's quantity of my Volo project, project in their merino linen mohair bundle, which you knit together. I'll put the project idea up here. I try to keep notes of what I'd like to knit as inspiration. And I thought this would be good for kind of that spring change of season time since there's a little bit of linen in it, so it won't be It'll be warm, don't get me wrong, but it won't be as warm. So yeah, that's project idea number one. Or I have a sweater's worth of this, which is Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk in their curry color. So I thought it was a nice yellow. It's more of a fall yellow with a golden hue. Um, not quite a spring yellow, but I still thought it would be nice. And I'm considering two projects, either making, I've seen projects on Ravelry with this, with this exact yarn, um, and it doesn't take that much. Apparently they've only done it with four, three to four balls, and I have six of this because I do like a bit extra length in the body. Anyways, so yes, I was thinking about making the ranunculus, or even another pattern by the same designer. Oh, what's it called? I don't know what it's called, but I'll I'll throw a picture in so you know. So I'm just trying to decide, should I do this or should I do this one? And I think the one of these ones will kind of help lift my spirits a bit more about <laughs> knitting. Even though they are the hairy mohair yarns. Well, this is alpaca, this one has mohair. I think it'll be a much better project than that dark alpaca, brushed alpaca, alpaca yarn. So we'll see how it goes. That's kind of the up and coming. I'd like to do a new project for myself as well as finish those baby knits. Next up, I have 
a few things added to my stash. One of that was, um, some of that was new yarn for the bigger bunny. Since that yarn was a bit thin and it came out a bit smaller, I thought the bigger size would do better. But yeah, so I got that, the yarn for that bunny, as well as, and I got the same one in a different color to make the teddy, the teddy bear sweater by Petite Knit because I have a strand of cashmere to go in with it and originally I was going to hold it with this color. Here I'll grab the sweater. Originally I was going to knit it with this but this is it's really hard to catch the proper light but this was almost too taupe and too cool toned for the cashmere was a true dark chocolate brown. So what I ended up doing was just getting a worsted weight um, in that super wash, that 100% virgin wool. And it's like a perfect color match. So although the wool might not be as nice as the merino, I think the cashmere will make up for that and still add a little bit of fluff and luxury to the knit. I don't think it'll be machine washable since there's cashmere in it. I'd be a bit worried that that wouldn't hold up or that it would seize, even though the main bulk of the the fabric will be wool, a super wash wool. That's the first new yarn that I got for a specific project in mind. Then I got my two yarn subscription boxes for February, which was nice because they came, they usually are sent in the middle of the month but because of the postage delays, I, I don't get until the next month, but these came early, like they came around end of February. And first one is the Long Way Homestead. This month is the Rideau Arcot. It's a two-ply uh, two fingering, natural, that's not dyed, and both grow in a mill in Manitoba. Like I said previously, I'm not doing anything with these individual skeins yet. I'd really like to do a big project altogether, but I need to get a better idea if it's going to be fingering weight or worsted, um, and if I should double up on the fingering to try to equal the best worsted as I can, and maybe make a blanket or a big, a big project with everything as a little wool sampler. But we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we have Belfast Mini Mills, which is a super cheerful month and it came as a kit so I have a skein of their island worsted collection and this is hand painted as well as their roving and this is with the intention to make I won't show you the pattern um thrum mittens so I have talked about this before but thrum mittens are known in the maritimes and what you do is you knit your mitten and then you add these thrums so what I'll what I'll do to make it easier is instead of ripping, I'll just snip. I'll snip and make thrums that way. And then you knit them in with your mittens. And what happens is the mittens get super poofy and you put them on it and you, it's almost like a boxing glove. They're so big and poofy, but then the, the roving does flatten down over the time and still keeps the warmth. And so it does get a better fit. But the whole point of them is to keep your hands warmer than they would with just a single layer of yarn. So I'm quite excited for that. I really like how, so in this example, it's plain yarn and then they have a bunch of different color roving, but I like how it's going to be plain roving and then fun yarn. And this would be great in the cold, like the end of the fall with the, when the weather's kind of turned, but it's not quite winter yet, but you want your mittens. I mean, I always want mittens. I don't know if that's, <laughs> if everybody wants them, um, but I have cold hands, so I'll be wearing them. And I think the colors are just perfect for the fall. I don't plan on casting this on right away since I do have other, other plants that I've told you about, um, but I am really excited to make these eventually. Next up is I did get a couple publications that are new. So the first one is the Pom Pom Quarterly Magazine. Comes out quarterly. So this is their spring issue, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Spring 2021, you might have seen that around. And it looks super fun. I was unsure about it at the beginning, just with the quilting, and I thought it would be more crochet heavy, which there's crochet patterns. But now that I do know how to crochet, 
I feel like that I might be able to do a few more things, but there's some cool patterns in here. I'll try to show you one or two. So I thought that one was really neat. And the one that really got me was this jacket. This was kind of the one that piqued my interest. So you can see it almost looks um, like Tweety. It kind of reminds me of a, mildly reminds me of a Chanel jacket just with those. It's it's not a cross stitch. Apparently it's knit as you, it's, it's woven in as you knit. So I'm really excited to learn what that technique is. I thought that'd be really interesting, even if you just do it in a couple neutrals and didn't go with the uh, the bright colors or, well, they're, they're Easter colors, they're pastels, but a lot of this magazine is quite, quite bright. So it's hard for me, it's sometimes I have to look past the brightness and say, okay, so what would I wear this in? Yeah, but I'm really excited. It should be fun. Oh, here, one second. Yeah, like here's what I thought Oops, that's that's the pattern. I can't show you that. So I thought most of the um, publication would be more crochet-based items like this, but there's not. So they, great example, Granny Square cardigan. Uh, there's a, sh a couple of shawls, a really cool wrap T-shirt, uh, cardigan, sweaters. So it looks it looks fun. Um, and regardless of some of the funky patterns they look very wearable especially if if you plan the coloring to suit your wardrobe a bit more so yeah i'm really excited to dig into that and figure out how to do some of these techniques because i've never seen them done before and next up is also from pom pom i got this in a combined order with the new jacqueline Cislack embody book which I'm really excited for and that's coming out at the end of March. Pre-orders are out right now. You can get them through your local yarn store and that looks like a really good good book. Lots of information. I know she's known to to teach how to make garments fit you properly and how you adjust if you have bigger biceps or a larger chest and smaller shoulders and really knowledgeable on size and fit and that is something I would like to get more into. I have been knitting garments for a year. I've made probably close to nine, maybe seven. But with that, I feel like, although I am still very much a beginner um, with knitting in general, let alone garment making, I'd like to m learn more of those techniques in order to get a better fitting sweater and different garments, whether it's a sweater or a cardigan or top but something with more structure that fits me to perfection. Because if you're spending all this time making something, why not make it match your own schematics rather than the patterns? Like you have the, the standard size, it's like, okay, this is bust waist hips. It's like, okay, so well, I don't, I don't match the size medium bust or the size large bust. So make it work for you. And I think the help with that book as well as this one, just to understand some basic pattern writing techniques. I'll hopefully be able to manipulate patterns going forward so that I get the best fit for me. So I'm excited for that. I'm taking a few classes in March with Vogue Knitting Live, and then hopefully some in April with Knit City Virtual. Both of them are online of course, but some of the teachers that really focus on fit and the math behind how to get that fit. So it should be fun. I think I'll need a notebook <laughs> and maybe even a calculator to write down formulas. And it's more ba it's more intense than just basic adding and subtracting. Might even have some trig, I don't know. We'll find out. But I am hoping going forward that I can get better fits, I can learn those techniques and just become a better knitter overall and hopefully those classes along with some books will help me along the way 
anyway, big rant. Next one is Ready Set Raglan, which is a book about knitting raglan sweaters, which is probably one of the most popular it's knits. Lots of people like to do raglan sweaters or yoke sweaters, and it's usually top down in the round, so it's simple which is why they're great for beginners and they're pretty quick and there's no seaming and you can try it on as you're making it so you know exactly when to cast off. But I am hoping that, not I mean, not only is there just nice basic sweater patterns in here, but they do have some sizing and formula information near the back of how to pattern right and how to make those those adjustments so it fits you. I don't know if there's too much else. I, I was telling you about the upcoming classes. I did take a few lectures in February from, again, Knit City as well as Vogue Knitting Live, both online. And that was about, most of them were about wool traceability. And that was a really interesting lesson to listen to. For the upcoming ones are more class-based and you learn techniques or the math or how to write a pattern and that. So I'm excited to, for that for the upcoming weeks. I'll let you know how it goes. Um, it seems like a really good way of learning, especially since even if we were able to travel, not everybody can make it out to these big cities throughout the winter. So it's nice to have the option online. And then because of that, they're also a lot more affordable. So yeah, that's all that's coming up. I'll keep you posted on how that cardigan goes or if I just call it quits. We'll see. Let me know what sweater you think I should make. The yellow one or the blue one. Um, I'll check in with you in two to three weeks time again. Um, we'll see how much I can knit in that time. And in the meantime, enjoy the last few weeks of winter. I'm pretty excited for spring to turn around as the snow is melting away. We really just have some piles from the snowplow left and then it's gone, but the grass is already starting to look green. Yeah, so thank you for joining me today and have a good two weeks. Bye.